What's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about how we plan our routes and what to do when things just don't go according to plan, which <laughs> nowadays seems to be like more often than not. <laughs> Hey guys, my name's James. And I'm Ashley. Last year we sold our house and we're traveling across the country with our kids. Hi, my name's Goose and this is Maverick. <laughs> Come join us. So our last adventure video was at Subwood Theme Park in good old Athole, Idaho which uh, was a pretty amazing time. It was kind of like our family reunion, our summer get together, which we have done for the past three years. Yeah. If, you, if you guys want to check out those videos, I'll make a Silverwood playlist right up there. You guys can check that out, but. So fun. So the reason today's video is all about route planning and what to do when things go wrong is because believe it or not, today things went wrong. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Why don't you tell what happened, babe? We cried. Felt like dying a little inside. No, I'm kidding. Um, so we planned a trip from Silverwood to Pendleton. Now we have always, I say we, I mean me. I, I have always wanted to go back to Pendleton since I was there for like, uh, we, we did cheerleading, I did cheer, we didn't, I did. Ashley was like an all-state cheerleader. What, 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 what division did you get into? This is a total tangent, but speaking of which. I was a cheerleader and our high school won 10 straight uh, titles in a row. She was like one of those champions. girls that got thrown up in the air. Anyways, you would never big old that. tangent, mm -hmm. <laughs> back to route planning. Okay, so uh, we used a new app called dirt and it's actually how i found i always want to call it the fish place but i don't remember honestly Folsom farm Folsom farm i don't know why i call it the fish place so the was there fish in it somewhere i think it was called fish trap also okay uh the the dirt is a camping app that's been around for a while now it's actually like the number one rated camping app in uh the app store but they just recently launched this new feature called route planning which is awesome for RVers. Uh, it's kind of like, think, a combination of Google Maps meets your camping app. So All Stays or Campendium or whatever kind of put together. It's a very cool feature. It's in its infancy. It just launched this month. So they uh, are going to be adapting it and working mm -hmm. it to, to work out all these features. But it's such a cool little thing. So uh, basically what you do is you plug in your point A, which is your starting point, and your point B, which is your final point. You tell it all sorts to things like I want to travel an average of four or five hours a day. Uh, my uh, truck's on diesel. Mm -hmm. It's uh, my rig is 30 feet long, etc. You do all these things. You can add uh, stop points along the way. Like, okay, I know I'm traveling from here to Florida, but I want to stop in yeah. uh, this city or this amusement park. And then it plans your route for you and gives you suggestions on different campgrounds you want to go to. And it's got some really cool features, such as it'll let you know, okay, based on average price cost of what you're gonna pay for gas, it'll cost you $900 to do this trip, Amazing. which is actually a really cool feature for what we've done the past few years where we've driven home for Christmas because I've actually had to go in and do the math myself and try and figure out or guesstimate, okay, taking the trailer home at 10 miles per gallon based <laughs> on this many miles, figure out via Google Maps, like how long, how much will that cost us versus, okay, just buying airline tickets, which would be so much easier, would cost us uh, this much, this $500 or whatever and so being able to have that instant uh, guesstimation of what your fuel costs would be versus say what other mode of transportation would be is super cool so that's just one of the many features you can have uh, in this app but anyways Ashley was saying she used the dirt to find uh, where we were going in Pendleton so back to that story I tend to interrupt I'm sorry <laughs> if you couldn't tell I talk a lot compared to Ashley a little bit Anyway, so I used the dirt to look up places that we could go. I've always wanted to go back to Pendleton. I was there, as I said, for uh, cheerleading for a basketball championship, I think it was, or something, doesn't really matter. Anyway, and I never really got to see it, see it. We were, you know, at a creepy hotel, and then we went and cheered, and then we went home, and that was that. And so, if you're from the Pacific Northwest area, you've probably heard of the Pendleton Roundup, which yes. is like a huge rodeo. It's like one of the biggest rodeos in the Pacific Northwest, which is kind of like their claim to fame, which is what Pendleton is known for. Well, it's also known for whiskey. Oh, eh, no, that's not where Pendleton whiskey comes from, is it? I don't think I so. I don't think so. <laughs> She's pulling this out of her. <laughs> I think that's in Canada. Anyways. 
Let's look it up. Ashley is having to do some quick Google search oh, to find out if Pendleton whiskey is no, actually it, made. I told you, I think it's from Canada. Oh yeah, it is, Canada, okay, Canadian. Yeah, so as I said, she's pulling it out of her I was just saying it to see if you would believe me. <laughs> and I did, I gotcha. People, this is why you look things up. Find information for yourselves. So anyway, because I never really got to see Pendleton for myself, I wanted to go see Pendleton for myself, but with my family. And I thought this would be a great time because rodeo was a big part of my life for many, many years. Um, I still enjoy a good rodeo, but it doesn't mean that I want to always go P to Participate them in them. Or go to them. <laughs> but the cool thing is, is the whole reason that Pendleton came up is because we used the dirt's route planning to go from Silverwood to Central Oregon, which is our next destination, to figure out what kind of stopping points would be good along the way, other than Yakima, which we had done on the way up, or Moses Lake, uh, to just see- Or Fish Trap. Hey, I was very proud that Folsom I found- Farm. Folsom Farm, whatever. I was very proud of myself for finding something that was really beautiful. Yeah. Like last minute and- It was, high yeah. five. High five, way to go, the dirt. Anyways, so uh, Pendleton was on the route, so we're like, oh, let's figure out what we got there. And we found a casino that had free parking because we knew we were only gonna be there for a night or two. And since we have our whole system, we always try and go for the boondocking affordable we route go when we free. can. <laughs> That's when things started to not go according to plan. First issue, yes, I say our first issue <laughs> happened on this route, babe. Why don't you enlighten them on what happened first? Was it the tired kids? Is that what we're talking about? No, I mean, that's, oh. a, that's an every time issue. We always okay. have children. Never mind. It was not the tired kids and knowing we would be in the car for a long while and they were already breaking down. I was thinking upon arriving in Pendleton. It wasn't even upon arriving in Pendleton. I know what you're thinking. Oh, okay. Whew. All right, the day of, we um, started off in the car for our journey, and I looked at the weather, which we should have done first, okay? Like, complete newbie mistake. Look not, at your forecast. Oh my gosh, I'm not sure where our heads were. Um, it was gonna be 100 plus. And we were planning on parking on blacktop, in a casino parking lot with no hookups. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, we have our whole Battleborn battery set up in solar, so we can run our AC for a few hours on that, but not all day, every day for 48 hours straight. Yeah. So that was our first fiasco. It was hot. So we pulled oh into gosh. this casino parking lot and we got all set up, which was fine. But then we realized, oh my goodness, it is so hot. So we tried calling mm -hmm. the uh, the casino RV park because they do have an actual RV park you can go to. And of course, because it's so hot, they were booked up for like a yeah. week or two straight. So that was our mistake number one. We didn't look at the forecast. We didn't uh, plan our stay according to the weather, which is huge when you're trying to do things like boondocking, especially if you don't have our setup where you can run your AC at all. Like Or like, a hundred stinks. Like, let's just be honest. A hundred degrees outside and you're like, Unless you're in the water. Goodness gracious me, like, my sweat has sweat, which then has sweat. It's just, it's disgusting. In all the wrong places. In all the wrong places. Gross. Anyway. <laughs> Gross, but um, true. And so, it's just that like, ugh. You know, you're just nasty. And then you're like, hey, let's be on the blacktop with no shade. Like <laughs> yeah, if there were yeah. trees, might have been a little better, but no trees hey, those on Those lampposts yeah. give off a lot of shade. Hot diggity. So anyways, once we got set up and figured out, okay, all the RV parks are full, we just tried to go into salvage mode to salvage what we had. And thankfully the casino had a movie theater that was mm -hmm. still open during the whole COVID-19 thing. Uh, and so we're like, you know what? Let's go see a movie. They had, uh, I think it was Zootopia, which is like, yeah. you know, the old Disney movie, not old, but you know, it's a couple years old now. That was like a second run movie that the kids were excited to go see. We and we were fine paying to go, like paying, I think Basically, it was four bucks to go see it. <laughs> we paid for the air conditioning yes, is really we what we did. paid for. So uh, it was a little bit of a fiasco because this was the first time the kids in public had to wear their masks. And so that was like a big thing that uh, I know it's commonplace now, but goose, this- goose has had to wear a mask before, but they had Maverick wear a mask, which was 
like she did it, but she didn't quite understand it, and it's fallen off of her face. Yeah, a three-year-old so wearing a mask is just... It was just kind of like, ah, oh, nerd. But once we got in the theater, we were able to have our snacks and take the masks off and watch the movie, and we really enjoyed having that time to relax. So we salvaged that. That was salvage of that evening, which was great, because then by the time we got out... It had cooled down a little bit. I think it was like 80s, which is, for me, which is... Maybe. I think it was still high 90s, but or I, low 90s. I was going to say, I don't think it was high 90s, uh, which to me is tolerable, not desirable, but tolerable. Uh, James was still a little hot, so we decided we would go for treats. Uh, for him, of course... AKA Starbucks. Like, it was all because of him. <laughs> we did it for, for James, guys. Um, Anyway. But uh, after Starbucks, we hit up the Pendleton Roundup uh, Rodeo, the stadium where they have that. There's a little playground park next to it with like a little rock climbing wall and swings. And just so Ash could see the Pendleton Roundup and kind of explore that area and see what it's like. It was parked out in the woods, keys still in the ignition. All the cops were buzzing from somebody's bad decision Call everyone you know, we found the evidence Just don't let them see you when you jump across the fence Somebody stole a beer truck, it don't matter who it was Grab a can and drink it up, best keep your mouth shut Man, we're good to go, yeah, we hit the mother load. So we're officially at, I don't know if you can see it back there, the Pendleton Roundup Ashley's very excited to be here. But the big news is, is Goose has officially made it into the Pendleton Roundup barrels. Pendleton Roundup, there's the arena right there. And here is Goose with her barrels. We got the first two barrels here and the bench back there. Are you ready? Get set, go! For the first time in like, I think it was a hundred years, so a century, they, closed the Pendleton Roundup. It didn't happen this year. And so you couldn't go in. I couldn't see it. They didn't even have their like museum open. Nothing. So this is issue number two. We yeah. didn't. We didn't the plan ahead. The issue that is happening more often now with people traveling is uh, not knowing whether or not businesses are opened mm -hmm. or closed because of COVID, yes. which is really when it comes down to you can't trust Google, you can't trust even websites. You really need to call and get firsthand knowledge from people at the actual business to figure out what it is because the website still said that a lot of this was open. Yes. And uh, so we just figured, oh, cool, we're good to go. Um, you know, it's out in the country, things are more relaxed, you know, maybe that they have the businesses open or whatnot. We were wrong. Yeah. Like Ashley said, the museum was closed. The uh, there's like a children's museum, the Pendleton Roundup yeah. Museum. Like all these museums were closed, and <laughs> all we're these mad. all these things that we had planned. Like we did our planning in that we wanted. We knew okay when we figure out where we're going to a place, we want to know, okay, there's got to be more than one or two things yeah. that we want to do to make it worthwhile to go to this area. So Ashley found, like she said, the Children's Museum, the Museum for the Pendleton Roundup. And this underground tour, but the Children's Museum even said it was open now. And so I'm like, okay, so it says it's open. However, like we're not mad at these businesses. It's not their fault. It is completely yeah. our fault and we will take full responsibility for not doing We're just homework. saying route planning nowadays yes. is far more difficult than it was six months ago. Yeah. You gotta call and get first hand. Yes, we're open. These are our hours this week because it's changing on a week by week yeah. basis. So uh, it's becoming much more difficult to route planning, which is why we're trying to give you as many of these tips and tricks exactly. and apps that we use to make things go smoother. The whole reason we do this channel is, you know, making sure that you don't make the same mistakes we do. So <laughs> we didn't know a thing about uh, RVing when we started, but we bring you guys along for the journey and you can learn from our mistakes. Exactly. However, I also read about this underground tour and they said they were open and I was so excited. I was like, yes, let's see if we can get in. And, and they were open. To be fair, they were actually open. They were functional, but there's always a but. We did not do our research yet again and children under the age of six were not allowed on this underground museum. Yeah, well, no, they no, straight they up weren't, weren't, allowed. Yeah, they weren't allowed. Uh, because, to be fair, it had to do with certain ladies of the night yeah, and there other were certain th things. Not that I want Goose to be privy to that information. However, when it comes to history, like, I think that they take, especially with COVID, 
lately they only take groups of your family so it's not like I couldn't be like oh let's not talk well, about that kind of info at this point in time. Yeah, and I mean, there are certain, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it's, it's a toughy, touchy subject, but we thought it wasn't really cool because there was all sorts, there was this whole underground area with all these kind of, not black market, what word am I thinking for? Uh, all sorts of things down there with- uh, Like the moonshine. Yeah, like as far as like uh, businesses that were selling things. Yeah, like literally, I think like a black market kind of area that was huge that they do this tour of. And it's, the best part is, is it's all underground. So it's nice and cool down there, even when it's a hundred degrees <laughs> up above. Which is like, we were like, it's we're like, underground, it'll it's be gonna fun. be perfect. Like my claustrophobia, I was really worried. Cause I'm like, oh. There will be no way to get out from certain places. However, it will be nice and cool and not 100 degrees. So if you guys go to Pendleton and are able to do any of these things that we wanted to do, let us know how yeah. they were. <laughs> maybe like, maybe we'll have to go back or maybe on our route, plit, trap, <laughs> maybe on our next route out to Idaho or something, we'll have to navigate through that part of Eastern Oregon. Uh, but, Things just did not go according to plan. So we no. ended up, what did we end up doing? We just left, we left. the next afternoon, right? Yep. We just so left. we were in Pendleton for I think less than 24 hours, unfortunately. No, it was almost 24. Yeah, less almost. than 24 hours. So we packed up and ended up heading back Headed to back. Central Oregon. Yep. But uh, I think the main takeaways we want you to get from this video are there are some really cool apps out there mm. to help you with your route planning. Uh, so the Dirt was the new release for your travel plane that we think is really cool. Especially if you're like someone like me, the Dirt seems to um, kind of lean towards type A personalities. It's a also, great planning app. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah, yeah. Like, you can plan down, like, 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 like. You can plan down to the miles, potentially how much it's gonna cost you, and not only can you route plan and plan for financial costs and whatnot, you can also get deals with certain campgrounds by having the Dirt Pro. It's almost like a discount club. So if you are subscribed to the Dirt Pro, there's lots of pro features such as the route planning, mm -hmm. but then also uh, discounts at hundreds, I thought thousands, I'll put the number down below once I figure out what that is, of campgrounds out there. So you get uh, X number of dollars off or percentage off for staying out there. So it makes the uh, cost of the app like instantly worthwhile as soon as you stay at a few campgrounds because it pays for itself already. One of my favorite features is this is the first camping app that I've seen that has any sort of travel route planning mm -hmm. thing built in. It used to be that I would start in Google and have to figure out, okay, how many miles is it from here to there? What's it gonna take us? Okay, it says eight hours, but that's realistically probably like 10 hours of traveling. Okay, where's the midway point? Are there, exactly. any, are there any campgrounds in this area? And then I gotta switch over to this app and figure that out. I'd sit there and like go, okay, this looks like that many miles. Let's go here. Oh, yeah. nope, nope, is, that's not and it. Is there any, okay. And even if you find where it is, like, oh, there's a city there. Are there any campgrounds? Yeah. No, okay, oh, but there are campgrounds, but they all cost like $100 a night so yeah. this on, instantly yeah. sorry I keep interrupting <laughs> on the app you can sort like okay I'm looking for free boondocking sites or okay I only want to spend $50 a night it has all sorts of filters that or you would free. expect <laughs> exactly <laughs> that you would expect and ever since we learned about the dirt this is one of the go-to apps that we've been using especially since they released especially I almost said especially which Ashley hates <laughs> anyways you say ex ex especially. especially since they released this route planning feature which I think is super cool it's a great uh, starting point for figuring out what your route's gonna be and then you can dive in there and you can adjust what campgrounds you're gonna get. You don't have to be stuck with the route they give you. You can go in there and tweak it and modify it. So very cool. But then also the other point I wanted to make in this video is when you are route planning these days you have to do even more research than you used to. We used to be so like fly by the seat of our pants like all right we're gonna head towards Florida which if you know and, me that's not me at all and that's like we would just start driving and then on our drive maybe we'd figure out where we're going or maybe the night before we'd figure out what we're doing the next day but nowadays you just can't do that unfortunately because you never know what's open what their hours are you can't trust what's online you got to get you got to call them find that phone number and do your research otherwise your trip will end up kind of like what happened to us in Pendleton but enough complaining guys uh, I will have every 
everything we've talked about linked up down below. So the Dirt and some of the other apps that we use, uh, as well as the specific places we wanted to go in Pendleton in case you're interested in going there. <laughs> uh, but uh, we would love to hear what do you guys do for route planning and have you guys done any trips in the past three or four months during this whole uh, COVID thing? Yeah. What what things have, what tips and tricks have you learned? What because are your, yeah, what are your tips and tricks for traveling during COVID? Because I guarantee that there are hundreds of other people watching this video that would love to know that. So not only for our benefit, but for theirs, leave those comments down below so we can learn from each other in these like brand new times mm -hmm. in traveling. Cause this is different than anything we've ever had before, yeah. especially when it comes to RVing. So uh, anyways, guys, until next time, remember <laughs> stay positive, get out there. Life is an adventure. So, so make, make some, some memories. memories. And stay safe. Let's talk about dirt, baby. Let's talk about road planning. I no. love these outtakes you give me for the end. Um, anyways. Next time on The Chick's Life. Some solar is good, but more solar is better. We're gonna be checking out some new panels that are half the cost of our original install. Will it be worth it? Let's find out next time on The Chick's Life.